We have some new tournament results covering from the WGP Deluxe season. So let's go through all of the results over the past couple of weeks. I know that I've missed quite a few events, but you know, trying to put it all together so that, you know, we can kind of see how things shape up. So we had, I think, WGP Malaysia, Singapore. I think recently this weekend we had Thailand and a few others uh, and WGP uh, in Kyoto as well. So lots of big results. So let's just talk about it. You know, there's been a lot of changes, a lot of things in the air at the moment. And, you know, uh, with the new ban list being implemented, uh, I think it's tomorrow um, or whenever it is, start of October, whatever. So a lot of these results might skew a little bit, but for the most part, the only decks that really get hit is our uh, Shoujo Doji and Shunui. So let's talk WGP Malaysia. So this one had double blocks. So pretty much day one, day two. Uh, each of the top eight played in the top 16, um, I guess cut, so to say, and then the top eight advances. So a lot of the breakdown here is um, Shoju Doji and Luard, and then pretty much a bunch of other stuff. So like Dayusha, Eva, and then one of everything else. So predominantly, there's a lot of Shoju Doji and Luard. And this is probably translatable to the D uh, BS BCS season as well, because a lot of these players would be, you know, obtaining these decks have access to these decks to play for the bcs season so you know given that malaysia will be in i think it's at five meta um most of this graph is pretty relevant right so the top eight the people who made it past the top 16 cut were two daishas two lords one black chronojet shunui and prison so a lot of this is actually not what we were expecting. So all the sh all the Shoujo Dojis literally got axed. And here we are, you know, a lot of brand gates. And it's cool to see, you know. We've been looking at a lot of Dragon Empire recently. And this is a new face to the standard format. The top four. So first was taken by Krinajet. Second was Dayusha. Third, Stephen Lowe with Black. And fourth was that you shot so pretty much a brand gate fest and then chronojet taking it all ultimately uh which is pretty surprising because i think Dayusha is actually a really good deck into stride decks and obviously you know um things may happen uh but you know it's really cool to see you know jet being this overcasted deck for the longest time and now it's coming back to take wins so just gonna go through the jet list it's pretty uh, similar to the one that won before, uh, pretty much playing uh, Forward Virtus um, with Nocturcio as your finder for your um, your Grade 2 Smoke Gear. Uh, and then pretty much you have your Bracing Angel Ladder for any disruptions or Shunui. Then you have Upstream Dragon to go into your Folklore. Uh, you have your Tiskars and your Clockwise to be able to enable the EB3 so that the Folklore uh, procs right so this deck actually draws a lot i've been playing around with this deck a lot uh it's actually really really strong in terms of its hand hand size but in terms of like i guess the aggressiveness in comparison to a lot of other decks like shunui um yeah it lacks a little bit like shoji doji as well um so yeah very cool deck to see uh coming first place then looking at the daisha this is as cookie cutter as it gets if you're looking for a really good daisha deck this is this is it pretty much playing two of the blitz orders uh as long as you have multiple set orders it's really good you have cards to be able to find your orders uh and you're only playing one die dragon because you essentially just have it in the right line you soul blast it and then you have access to it right so yeah very very strong deck uh especially against stride decks because what you can do is you set up the bases just keep looping them your opponent attacks into the rear guards doesn't matter you just get refunded with new d robos um, very very strong deck and probably a deck that I'll look to play for the BCS season. Uh, it looks very fun, not gonna lie. Then looking at the next one, so this is Stephen Lowe's deck playing Black. Black is pretty much Wellstraw uh, with multiple restands on top of the product order. Uh, this grade two essentially stands itself with a Soul Blast, a grade three from Soul. Uh, Black itself stands a rear guard, and you just get like a bunch of multi attacks, right? Uh, with reduction of power, it makes black very, very strong and much better than um, Wellstra. So, which is why we see more black results than we do with Wellstra. Um, so, yeah, very cool deck. Uh, I gotta say, if this deck ever comes to English, I am definitely playing this. Very, very cool. 
then WGP Singapore season three. So this is pretty much where everything just kind of went Stoic Hair's way. So three Leon, on, two Night Roses, uh, one Eva, Doji, and Blang Maya. There's not very many Dojis, and I think it's because a lot of the decks just is super aggressive. And if you're really aggressive against a Doji, it's pretty beneficial for you because Doji doesn't actually have a pretty big hand, right? It's very minimal, if anything. So then the top four were two Leonorns, and then third was a Night Rose, fourth was an Eva. So Leonorn is a very good pick into stride decks. And I think it is a very good call, uh, especially, you know, coming into the first week of stride deck sets being legal. Um, and, you know, everyone's on these stride deck sets. It's very easy to grab them. Uh, Leonon is a very, very good pick for this event. Then looking, I guess, at the deck builds uh, with obviously the new set four, uh, you get this new grade two that is essentially a 15K booster or a count plus one. Search for Vivace in the top seven, I think. Yeah, top seven and if you don't then you draw one um and you obviously have like all your other good cycler stuff so like um uh elvina uh the eb cycler rosarium fairy is absolutely cracked uh in this deck you pretty much copy any of your boosters or your grade two boosters that just gains insane amounts of power you have a lot of draw power in this deck as well because if you stand lust of purge uh you get the draw as well and vivace is just really really strong producing essentially six attacks but when one of your or well, two of your attacks is a rosarium fairy it's pretty strong right one habitat to be able to search for your key pieces essentially and then this grade one to essentially cc you uh 13k booster is always good too so yeah uh lots of things going on but i think this deck is really strong um and probably one of the better picks for the bcs season then this is the other one. So this deck plays the Broccoli, uh, but more or less pretty much the same. One of the Carbuncle, uh, two of the uh, Unison Dress promo. Um, but I think the promo, you don't really need it given that you have the new grade two. Um, so it kind of serves the same and it plays the um, normal order. So for each time your other unit attacks from the unit that this selects, um it gains plus five so you pop it onto like the luster purge dragon or the booster grade two uh and then just gains insane amount of, insane amount of power and then pretty much rosarium fairy copies it so yeah very cool deck i gotta say i've uh, been enjoying leonon a lot and probably a deck that again i will probably pick up for the bcs season then night rose so night rose is obviously one of the new additions to the meta uh a lot of the decks played the grade three uh blitz order and then you also run the one one of the um hostage package uh really easy to kind of get there are some decks that run i guess two of the orders and none of the grade two but the grade two essentially if you if you mill it you have access to the order anyways um other than that you play this generic thing um pretty much stops effects from you know when you intercept or something along those lines uh and then you're cutting thin on your philanders uh your venus and yeah you pretty much have the whole packet you're still playing the one night storm i think because it's a really good beat stick and it's actually really good in the mirror um so yeah yeah that's pretty much night rose and i think a lot of people are picking up night rose and i think night rose is pretty much profound as one of the best decks in the format at the moment and yeah it's just really strong then looking at wgp kyoto so as you can see a, a portion of it is night rose and majority of it is shoujo doji i think there's just a lot of people who love night rose and you know that's why the distribution is so high the conversion rate is probably low uh but you know based on the pie chart itself it takes up a big proportion of it right uh, other decks that are of notice is Impolio. Impolio is one of the decks that I guess people were like, it's pretty average, but you know, showing results here. Um, I guess also Diversity Cup plays a really big factor in that as well. Uh, Black, Blang, Maya, and then pretty much a bunch of the rest. Yeah. Then the top four teams. So the first team brought Shunui, Michu, and Black. Michu is very surprising here. Apparently, this Michu went undefeated um, from my sources. Uh, which is quite surprising because it's a deck that is available in English. Then the second team brought Luard, Shujidoji, and Black. 
Third is a really cool team. So Night Rose, Harry, and Impolio. And then fourth team was Welsh, Impolio, and Shoujudoji. So I guess looking at the Michu list, this is as straightforward as it gets. I think if you are playing in the English format, um, you definitely want to copy this list. Uh, this grade one order in the bottom here, just behind my camera, uh, it's one copy. Uh, and then you pretty much play like all of your other stuff. So pre pretty much like your grade three, right? Uh, pretty much you, you use the grade one similar to Eva, so this thing, to ride into the new glitter. Uh, and then you have these orders, right? Uh, and then pretty much when you uh, drop these orders, uh, you pretty much give three units 10k. And then if you drop the grade two, you stop um, a rear guard from intercepting, I think. Um, and then your grade two Nogno has drive check on rear guard and then your grade one no no swaps with your vanguard which attacks again so you get two one and one so you essentially get a quad drive and pretty much everything is refundable um your grade two uh is just really good just a basic searcher or counter charger really really strong um yuika you know if you get stuff on the board you just bounce it back uh really really strong and then the deck just plays itself I think it's a really good pick in the early parts of the season, but I think a lot of decks just outclass this later on. Um, so yeah, very, very cool deck. Uh, probably gonna borrow this deck and try it out. Um, but yeah, I think I played this when I was with Taunt for Spring Fest in Vietnam. So yeah, very, very cool deck. It hits like a truck and it's, yeah. If you go first into Doji, it's actually really strong because Doji doesn't have a big hand and you just rip it apart. Which is cool. Then the second one, which is pretty cool, probably one of the coolest decks, uh, Harry. So this deck is utilizing the uh, shout applause with the Togue engine, but it's not running the Blitz order, the Feel the Dark or something like that, whatever the Dark. Um, essentially, when you EV3, you can use it as a Blitz order from Soul, and then you put it to bottom deck, and then you just keep spamming Togue to essentially get it into Soul. Um, this deck plays the clockwise to be able to refund your stuff for Gungaram, maximum draw, Falcratius, and you only play one Dark Side Princess because it only matters uh, from second stride onwards. You're playing the Radiance Caliburn for the counter charge or the immediate draw two, and you have access to the cat at any point, uh, playing as one copy. If it hits the bin, you put it into Soul using Shout Applause. So, yeah, this deck is actually really strong, and we'll talk about it a little bit later because. Harry ended up winning one of the events uh, that I'll cover later in this video. Then the third deck that we're going to look at is Impolio. Uh, so Impolio, I don't know. I, I don't actually know about this deck. Uh, it has a little bit of an early game, kind of, not really. Uh, you have like a drive checking rear guard. Uh, if you, you know, divine skill, then you obviously get four drives and then two drives on rear guard. Um, so yeah, maybe you just like Omega Sack your opponent, but this deck plays the purple OT instead of the Elder Breath, which is quite interesting. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, you just hit crits, call it a day, your opponent's just dead. Uh, and there's nothing you can do about it, right? So yeah, uh, that's Impoldio. Then looking at the block B, again, very dominant with Night Rose, 10 Night Roses. And then the next highest proportion is four of, which is Luard, Shunui, and Shoujudoji. Then Bang Mai and then pretty much a bunch of the rest, right? So Night Rose, big contender, big fan favorite, and it's gonna show results, yeah? The top four teams, so the first team brought Luard, Zorga, Nadia, and Night Rose. Second brought Shunui, Night Rose, Luard. Third brought Shamo, uh, Night Rose, and Varga. And then fourth brought Night Rose, Shunui, and Bang Mai. So every team brought a Night Rose, and that's just how it is, right? 10 out of the 16 teams brought Night Rose, which is pretty cracked. So yeah, Night Rose, big contender, big good deck, pick it up. Then WGP Season 3, Thailand, so Thailand had Day 1, Day 2. Uh, so this is where it gets real spicy, right? So the top 8 for Day 1 consisted of 2 Vargas and 1 of pretty much everything else. So 1 Harry, 1 Viamant with Bruce. And that is a deck that I haven't seen in Yonks. Uh, one black, Night Rose, Shoujo Doji, and even Lutitia as well. So, a lot of like, you know, super outlier decks. And 
Harry took it all, coming first place, 0-2, you know, it's obviously not 0-2 if you are winning the event. Congratulations, buddy. Really, really cool to see Harry come first place. And even cooler, we see the first Vimant Bruce top um, in singles format. Uh, I don't think we really saw anything from this deck at all ever since its release. Third was Night Rose, and then fourth is Varga. So obviously looking at the top two lists. So Harry, this list is quite different. Uh, so using the Odetta to have an early game, you're still running the Shadow Plus Togue engine, and then you obviously run the uh, Walk the Dark. Walk the Dark, that's that's the Blitz order. So Walk the Dark, uh, you have the EB3 uh, for 15k shield, you put it to bottom deck and then you recycle it. But an interesting card that this person ran was this grade one. And this grade one says that if you, I think like during your turn, if there are three or more cards put into soul, then this unit gains plus 10. So it's an 18K grade one, which acts as a booster, but also as an attacker. Um, I'm actually unsure of whether this card is good. Uh, I guess it's like, if you put it into the front row, it's like 23 on first stride, uh, which I guess it's a number boosted by like, and 8k is like 31, which is pretty cool. Um, but I guess if you like put this behind like a Manticore, Manticore is like, and you call the Manticore using Harry, right? It's like 18 plus 18 is like 36, 36 plus 5, 41. Uh, 41 on first stride is actually pretty annoying. So yeah, very cool inclusion, gotta say. Uh, I'll play around with this, but yeah, it looks very interesting. Um, and then I guess the Regalus uh, option is pretty different as well. So you're running the protection uh win cast i think it is or something cast uh but yeah it essentially guards you twice uh so 10k and then 15k from the bin um so yeah very different deck very different take but i guess one thing that is uh mutual between both of these decks they all run the four tis cars they all run obviously pretty much the same bone structure but this deck only runs one gungaram which is yeah very different and no elementaria playing four straight pgs is yeah very very different very different but yeah uh very cool to see harry coming first always awesome to see harry first that is absolutely correct then looking at the vimans bruce list this is uh pretty wacky so this promo is now available in english at your uh shop tournaments so it essentially allows you to have what extend attacks um and there's like a twitter video x video that shows you can do like i think it's like nine attacks or something some, something ridiculous um and then you pretty much like you know julian into um other stuff and then yeah th this card is essentially the whole enabler um but yeah very cool to see viamance bruce especially if you're playing in a meta where it's all stride decks uh i mean if this player went first like absolutely rolled the opponent and your opponent can't really do anything then you know it's pretty cool and then maybe if you hit like ot sometime i guess you also play this which makes your vimance bruce 18k so against like shunui gets super annoying um so yeah maybe that's like the difference but anyways it, it's very very cool to see vimance bruce i actually didn't put a lot of time in this deck uh so the fact that I see a result is, you know, yeah, very, very uh, mind-boggling um, in a good way. So yeah, that is day one. And then day two were nearly an even split of everything. So two Doji, Black and Leonorn, and one Bang Mai and Night Rose. Then the top four was Doji, second was Black, third was Leonorn, fourth is Doji. And then I guess looking at the Black deck, very similar to Stephen Lowe's deck from uh, Malaysia. It runs the grade three that restands. Uh, you're playing the Blitz Order um, as the Regalus, um, which I guess makes sense because you're wanting to play like, you know, set orders uh, during your turn. So anything with like a Blitz Order is good. Maybe Union the Sky is okay in this slot as well. But then again, you use like energy, right? So maybe like having a double shield is good. So yeah, that is pretty much all the results we covered in this video for the last couple weeks uh there's a lot of new results and you know 
BCS season, I think, starts this weekend or next weekend. So it's very, very close. So we're going to see a lot of results, you know, coming up soon for the English format. And then maybe the ban list will just shake everything up. And Doji is no longer a deck. Or maybe Shunui is no longer a deck. And then we see a lot of these newer decks or these odd picks to start come up and take, you know, light in the meta scene, right? So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Pop a like, comment down below what you guys think of all the results covered in this video. If you guys haven't already, click that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.